So I'm going to do my lighting tutorial number two, and this is how to set up a scene with what's called three-point lighting, uh, which is used a lot in movies and real-life portrait photography. It's used in a lot of different different places in, in the real world, and this can add a really cool kind of dramatic flair to your scenes, makes them look really, really nice. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk you through how to set that up. So as the name states, three-point lighting system means that we're going to have three main lights. So right now I have a scene already created, but I've removed all of the lights that were in it by default. I used a, a prefab scene that already had some lights, but I've deleted everything. Um, so let me uh, swap back to my perspective view, and let me go texture shaded so you can see what everything looks like. There we go. So that's what my scene looks like. It's just a really simple bedroom scene, and I'm not doing anything outside. So I've got the camera pointed away from the outside towards my subject, which is a Bridget 8 HD. Just uh, kind of kind of lounging on the bed there. Um, all right. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create our three lights. And um, I had a question uh, that I got a few times from my lighting primitives scene. Uh, be sure to check that one out if you hadn't. That's one of my favorite ways of doing like general lighting for a scene. But I was asked if I always use primitives, and I don't. That's usually the quickest way I think to get decent lighting in a scene. Uh, but I don't always use that. This one takes a little bit longer to set up, but is really good for a, especially for a single subject scene. Um, like, like we're doing here. So the first thing we're going to do is create three spotlights and each one of these lights is going to serve a different purpose. So we're going to create one spotlight and then under label we're going to call this one key. This is our key light or our main light. So accept that and we're going to create another one and this one we're going to call the fill light, F-I-L-L. -L. And then the third one we're going to call the backlight. This one is sometimes called the rim light. I prefer to call it the backlight. I think it's a little bit more descriptive for what it does. That's gonna light our subject from the back, but we'll see that in a moment. Um, all right, now, um, I've already got a, a camera in the scene. Uh, you'll definitely wanna create that first and get it pointed at your subject, uh, whatever you want your perspective to be. Uh, be sure that you never render from perspective view. Um, always render from a camera view because that's going to give us a lot more control over our scene and we're going to use some of those controls in a minute. So let me swap. Actually, let me go to my key light. So if I switch here under my view, then I'm going to actually be able to look through my light. So I can position it pointing exactly where I want it. And I want, I'm going to position this one a next to my main camera pointing towards my subject at about 45 degrees. It doesn't have to be precise. I'm going to shoot for about a 45 degree angle there on her, about on her left profile. There we go. And uh, we're going to change some of our light settings. So I'm going to go to my lights tab and I'm going to select my key light, which is the one we're using right now. And the first thing I'm going to do is under light area, I'm going to change my light geometry. Right now it's at point, which is going to make it look, um, it's a very focused light, kind of like um, kind of like a flashlight. And uh, we want something a little bit softer, a little bit more diffuse. So a lot of times a professional photographer will use a reflector or a diffuser in order to diffuse or scatter the light. Um, so we're going to change our light geometry to disk, which is going to get a similar effect, not exactly, but kind of close. Um, next, we're going to defocus our light a little bit. We're going to spread it out by changing the height and width. I've already played around with some values for these, and I had pretty good luck with about 55. So I encourage you to experiment with all of these values. It's going to vary from scene to scene, and depending on what kind of effect you want to get, this has just seemed to work well for me. So I'm going to do a 55 height and a 55 width on the lights. Uh, you want to make sure two-sided is off, and render emitter is also off. So, and then we want to use that for some things, not exactly right for what we're doing today. And that is just about it. Temperature, we're going to leave it where it is. I mentioned temperature briefly in uh, one of my previous videos, I think in the, um, the lighting primitives video. But uh, right now it's set at 6500 by default. 6500 is a pure white light. Anything higher than that... A higher temperature and it's going to start to turn kind of a bluish hue anything lower than that it's going to start to turn kind of yellowish orange reddish as you get uh, as you get further away or further uh, as you get lower um, all right so our lumen is going to determine how 
bright our light actually is. It's set at 1500 by default, which is not very bright at all. Um, and again, I played around with some values for this one, so I already have a, I already know what value I want it set at. But again, just experiment with this. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set this at 90,000. So 90000. There we go. All right, and that's all we're going to do with our key light for now. We might come back and do some fine tuning in a moment, but that should work for uh, for us for right now. All right, next I'm going to switch to my fill light. So you want your fill light to be on the other side of your camera, but at the same angle as your, or at an opposite angle rather from your key light. So if your key light is pointing, is to the left of your camera, pointing 45 degrees towards your subject, you want this one to be on the right side of your camera, uh, 45 degrees toward your subject. So right there, that should be pretty close. And we're gonna set this one up in a similar fashion. So we're gonna go to area and set it up as disk under light geometry. We're gonna set our height and width also to both equal 55. Two-sided off, render emitter off. And okay, so I like doing these with a two to one ratio. Uh, so you want your key light to be the two and your fill light to be the one as far as your brightness goes. So you want your fill to be half as bright as your key light. So I've got my fill light or my key light set at 90,000. So I'm going to set my fill at 45,000. 45,000. And my temperature, I'm going to leave it at 6,500. Just have that be a pure white light. And let me go to my camera and go to NVIDIA IRA and we'll check that real quick and see what it looks like so far. There we go, not too bad. It's actually a little bit bright, but we're gonna, we're gonna fix that with a couple of things in a moment. Um, one thing I forgot to mention is under the area, the height and width, this is mainly gonna determine what our shadows look like. Um, for this, I wanna go for really soft shadows. You can see the edges of the shadows are soft. Uh, even You might say even a little bit blurry, um, but not really, it's just kind of a soft shadow. And if you wanted them sharper, then you would put these numbers lower. If you leave them at the default of 10, then that'll create really sharp shadows, but I want soft shadows for this uh, for this image render. So that's why I bumped those up a little bit. All right, next we are going to do our backlight or the rim light. Uh, let me go back to texture shade view. There we go. All right, and this one we're gonna put behind our subject and this one you want to experiment with a lot, but I generally like to put it just out of view of the camera and pointing down at our subject that way. And we're gonna to change to disk geometry, just like our other ones. This one, I'm going to leave it at 10 and 10, because I, I want this light to be a little harsher, a little sharper. And let's see, the lumens, we're gonna put the lumens on this one to be the same as our key light. So that's gonna be 90,000. And the temperature here, we're gonna set a little bit different. This is gonna be the thing that's really going to set your, set your scene lighting apart and, and make it look really good and professional, is this backlight. So we're gonna change our temperature to 3,500. And what this is going to do is create kind of an orange, yellow, reddish glow behind your character, and especially the way it hits her hair. I love the, the hair color I chose on this. Um, it's going to create kind of a halo around your character. So let me go back to the camera view. We'll see what she looks like now. There we go. So you can kind of see the way the light's hitting her hair in her hand, that backlight. Uh, it's not super dramatic just yet, but we're gonna we're gonna do a couple of more settings real quick. That's going to uh, is gonna fix the lighting a little bit further, and uh, we're actually gonna change some of our camera settings over on the left. Um, I've got a tone mapping uh, section selected, and if you don't know where to find this, it's under render settings. Um, if you if you're using the Nvidia Nvidia Iray engine, uh, which you should be, you should be able to see render settings. 
and then under render settings we have tone mapping. So a lot of this is our camera controls. If you have experience with a an interchangeable lens camera like a Nikon uh, uh, or a Canon DSLR, or um, I actually my uh, my wife uses a Nikon DSLR, I've got a Sony mirrorless camera that's kind of in the same category that uses a lot of these uh, same functions. The three things we're going to worry about are shutter speed, f-stop, and film ISO. So if you know how to use a, uh, an interchangeable lens camera, you're probably familiar with these. These form the three points of your exposure triangle. So shutter speed just tells you how fast the shutter moves. So a higher shutter value for this, this is 1 over 100. So right now it's 1 128th of a second. We're going to change this. Again, I played with these values a little bit so I know pretty much the look that I'm going for. We're going to change that to 1 200th of a second. So on this one, the higher you go, the less light the shutter is letting in on the on the film exposure or on the camera, the sensor. Um, so it's going to create a darker photo. So and already it's starting to darken up just a little bit. The f-stop I'm going to put at 16. And this is how wide your aperture is. There you go. So again, a higher number is going to make it darker because we're closing up the aperture. And then film ISO, that one is digital light correction. The higher the number this is, the brighter your shot is going to turn out generally. So we're going to put this at 200. And there we go. Now we have some nice dramatic lighting, some really good soft shadows. And then you can see that kind of yellow orange glow uh, that's going around the uh, around the character, um, especially if you look around the uh, around the thighs and the hips, uh, you can see the glow on the on the comforter on the bed, and then especially up around the hair, it creates kind of that halo feature. You can see that that light scatter off the hair looks really really nice. And that about does it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, render this image, and then we'll check it out and see what it looks like. And there we go. That is our finished render. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. But uh, like I said, feel free to feel free to play around with the settings a little bit, adjust the lighting, adjust the lumens, um, try moving them around a little bit. Just remember that if you move your key and fill light, you want them to be exact mirror images of each other. So if your key is pointing 45 degrees to the right, uh, you want your fill to be pointing 45 degrees from the left and you want them to be about the same distance from your camera as close as they can get. The backlight you can get some really cool effects by moving it up and down and adjusting the settings just experiment with it uh, depending on what scene you're using and depending on what kind of a fill you're, you're going for and just uh, try it out and see what you like. Um, that about does it for this video so if you like this feel free to uh, again um, subscribe uh, hit the notification bell so you'll be updated whenever I do uh, whenever I do new videos whenever I get new videos uploaded and uh, hit that like button as well. So that helps me out tremendously. If I get a, just a few more subscribers, I need 100. I think I need like seven or eight more subscribers and I'll be able to do a custom channel URL. And uh, man, help me get up to 1,000 subscribers and I can, I can start monetizing the channel. That would be really, really cool. So if you liked it, yeah, like, share, subscribe, notification bell, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you very much.